Hello! Yay! Hi! Hi, hi, hi. What's happening? Nice to see you again. <laughs> likewise, likewise. <Hello. laughs> okay, I'm going to just start the episode hmm? right now. How does that sound? Yeah, please Great. do. <laughs> all right so hello everybody i love your your backgrounds man I, I can't get no background on my my thing it's like oh i don't know i'm, I'm boring <laughs> just look at the back of my house <laughs> it's a beautiful house look at my beautiful house oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like a beauty and the beast background yeah exactly um okay so welcome to the podcast this is mind probe with mom do, 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 do. hello so this is a special episode today we have a guest israel how do you say your last name a Josie. A Josie. Israel yeah. a Josie. <laughs> yeah. And Israel is so awesome. When I got my first ever astrology reading, he was my astrologer. <laughs> was I your first one? Really? You were my first one. Oh my God. I broke your astrology virginity. That's uh -huh. like <laughs> your astro virgin, like, you know. <laughs> uh -huh. um, and so this is an episode where, because I want to teach my mom about astrology, but there's so much that goes into it. And I yeah. figured the very first building blocks of what you would want to know if you're going to start to learn astrology or tarot yeah. or Ayurveda is the elements. That's, so, a, that's a good, good, yeah, place to start. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I Definitely. thought I'll invite my very first astrologer reader <laughs> and because I love the way that you teach stuff. Oh, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this is, uh, okay, so let's do some intros. I'm Amber Jean. I am a comedian and astrologer. And this is my mom, Star Rhodes, and she's a mystical lady who's got a little <laughs> angel halo on right now. <laughs> and then Israel, um, how do you like to introduce yourself? Uh, well, I'm Israel. I'm just me. Um, I'm an astrologer, tarot card reader, do numerology as well, and I'm got lots of interests in terms of whether it's mythology cosmology psychology yes. um i'm into all kind of if you want to say esoteric or spiritual disciplines and knowledge i i, I love it all and um yes. yeah that's uh um i i just try and get as much as possible <laughs> yes you're mystical oh yeah i, love, love I have a question already oh. okay let's go <laughs> what what was it that triggered you to get into astrology like how old are you and what was it that triggered you to start um, it all okay that's a very good question uh and to i'll try and keep it as short as possible or i'll take up the whole show otherwise uh -huh. um <laughs> but but what it was is i, I actually used to be a boxer yeah, so cool. And um, I had quite a very good, you know, quite promising career. And it looked like, yeah, you know, I thought that's what it was going to be. And then uh, at some point, my career just went a bit sour, just went a bit. So I started like soul searching, just mm. like what's happening with my life, you know, and that's where it happened. It, like I, I found astrology, it found me. And I took to it like a duck to water and I just never looked back. It was like mm -hmm. just phenomenal. So I was 27 at the time, 26, 27. I think one of the big major things also that happened around roughly around that time is my mother passed away. Mm. Um, so that was also another trigger mm -hmm. again. So again, and then with the boxing not going as well as it should have been, uh, it was like a combination of the two. And then I, I started asking questions that, okay, what, what's going on here? Where am I supposed to be heading? What am I supposed to be doing? You know, that kind of thing. And yes. yeah, um, just was revealed to me on a plate. I couldn't argue. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of, well, anybody who gets really deep into astrology, I feel like they've they've had some kind of event to make them really try to search for some answers. And then you start finding them with yeah. astrology. It's so awesome. Yeah, exactly. 
exactly. So. Um, do you, are you open to sharing your big three? Yeah, most definitely. Ooh, I do want right. to find it. I will reveal. <laughs> 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 so big three. Um, sun sign is Libra. Oh, you're a Libra, so your birthday is around the corner, or did you? Oh, just it's have around it? the corner. It's like what, uh, three days away. <laughs> Ooh, happy birthday! Yeah, happy birthday. <laughs> so it's like three days away. Uh -huh. So yeah, um, and uh, my moon sign is Taurus. Ooh, and exalted, my ascendant exalted. is Cancer. Exalted moon, <laughs> and, 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 and that's my chart ruler because I'm Cancer rising. So, wow yeah because yeah, so the way that i found out about you was i was watching the astrology podcast and you were helping to teach about the moon and right, so yeah. that makes sense that you have prominent moon energy in yeah, your yeah, chart yeah, yeah yeah definitely definitely uh, i was the right one to pick <laughs> uh, <laughs> so let's dive into like where do you even start when you want to start teaching somebody about the elements what what is even the purpose of learning those first and um why are they such a backbone to learning astrology well the elements are very crucial because uh, they kind of provide a very important building block to kind of understand the kind of traits or characteristics that we possess. Mm -hmm. um, each one of the elements has a particular nature, a character, a way in terms of how it's, uh, its mode of expression. Um, so by understanding the elements, it really gives us that that initial building block that we need to build everything else on mm -hmm. um, even just know, the building blocks of reality too They're yeah 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 literally uh, and, and yeah and it's quite uh, the, the great thing about it is that although sometimes you you get people who, who could be maybe a little bit skeptic of astrology that everybody knows what the elements are we can identify with the elements because they're a mm -hmm. part of everyday life especially essentially speaking that they, they they're rooted in our everyday life there's no aspect of life where we don't use one of those four essential elements right mm -hmm. so it's like so it's really quite easy if you want to say or quite transparent to make the link or to put it across in terms of well you know this element acts like this this is the nature of this element this is the nature of that element that's how, it, you know, this is his tendencies. And also as well, I think also as well with the, with the elements, they really take us into a deep place. They, they provide particular insights that you wouldn't, I mean, we know the four elements, we know what they are and how they act, but there's also a deeper side to them. Like, like, oh, I've never thought of this element acting like this or being like this. And also it kind of corresponding to our personality traits what, well what's an example of being like oh i didn't know it did blah 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 so for example if we look at air yeah for example the element of air so with the element of air there's something out of all the four elements it's the only one we cannot see with the naked eye mm -hmm. and i think that tells us something about mm -hmm. the, the, the air signs my mom um, is an air sign Ah, right. She's an Aquarius. <laughs> we got a lot of Aquarius in the room. Yeah. You know, you got a lot. I've got my mom's in Aquarius, and, oh, and my midheaven is in Aquarius also as well. So, cool. which part, yeah. which thing is in Aquarius for you? My midheaven. My oh, midheaven. Mid oh, so you have a tour? Oh no, you. My mom has a Taurus rising, and so her midheaven is in Aquarius. It's in Aquarius, okay, but mm -hmm. I'm Cancer. So it's just yeah. because I'm born in London, UK, so it's the, the yeah, latitude it's in bit. terms of where the, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. the uh, you know, because the MC tends to float, so it can be in any one sign, and, and mm. based on the time I was so born. So you have an airy oh. kind of a legacy about you. Yeah, oh, it's yeah, you guys. yeah, that very, very, very much so. It's very airy it's very mental orientated mental because because mm -hmm. you see that's the thing with the air so you can kind of make the connection like air is something you can't see just the same way we can't see our thoughts right or, or thought processes so there's mm -hmm. something invisible about it like and, sound and think, waves and stuff exactly too. and i don't think people kind of like we know kind of okay we say oh, air or we use it all, all the time but it's like take a look at what air does 
you know, air is something that moves. It's very free. It's very, you know, it's everywhere. It gets into the cracks of things. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it, it can't, it doesn't like to be contained. Uh, 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 or you can't contain it, you know. In some <laughs> My mom's literally in her car right now. <laughs> <laughs> and she's you like know, a does it sound like to... you <laughs> i know she's like she's uh in her car in tennessee right. and she's like doesn't even know where she's off to next she's like so air energy uh, yeah right exactly <laughs> so, so yeah so can't be contained <laughs> air wants to be free it wants to you know it air blows here and there it's it's not something that you can measure or contain it it, mm -hmm. it, it, it there's an element it start, and so when we start getting into the air element and start really analyzing it it really starts to shed a lot of light in terms of how the air signs aquarius and the gemini or the libra how they start to uh, you know what they're about mm -hmm. uh, and it gives us a, a deeper insight into their if you want to say psychology on some kind of level and 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 how they express themselves and how they view or operate in the world so do you think libra is like really into like freedom like how an aquarius is though uh, I, uh, I don't know no, i mean they're, they're, yeah, freedom yes, they're, related yeah there are there are freedom that yes that they are but uh -huh. but obviously they do it in a different way, of course. Mm. Each zodiac sign is unique unto yeah. itself. So um yeah, Venus does it through charm and through pleasantness and through, you know, that you mm. know, it, it, you know, it wants to, you know, it will do it through, you know, through social as well and interaction and relationships and yeah. stuff. So, yeah. So then I think of yeah. like how uh Libras can't be contained in one relationship. Like, right yeah <laughs> like oh i gotta flirt with this person oh, yeah okay exactly <laughs> exactly yeah you know and caesar and caesar sees like the truth in in opposite sees an attraction in this person and sees it in that person also yeah. as well and you oh, know so yeah um yeah libra that. is const constantly seeking that what mm -hmm. whereas with aquarius uh, aquarius is definitely more group orientated uh it mm -hmm. tends it's more of a social sign um, it, it's 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 uh, that's why Aquarius is connected with humanity. There's something humane about it. Uh, it's 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 one of the only zodiac signs where the the human, or it is the only zodiac sign where the the human being is a representation of that zodiac sign. It's, it's you know it's, it's it's human. It's the man pouring out the water, the, mm -hmm. the water bearer, uh, which is to do with humane, which is to do with spreading, which is to do with moving, which is to do with the collective. That would be uh, great uh, to know. talk about of like how um, there's two elements kind of tied in with Aquarius. Yeah, um, there's that there's that saying. Uh, there's a there's a famous um, uh, sort of like saying, which is actually true about Aquarians. They say Aquarians they they love humanity, but they hate humans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, so they, they kind of strive or they live for humanity. They're very progressive in many ways, but there's something about it like that, you know, because it's an air sign, so they're quite detached, you know, uh, originally it's a sign ruled by Saturn and then also Uranus as well. Both planets are quite detached. They're not known for emotional attachment in any way you know so they're quite detached so there's something about like can't stand the humans but i'm willing to you know do something progressive or something beneficial for the human race mm -hmm. nevertheless and, and that's like the aquarius kind of spirit so it, it, it's quite interesting it's really uh a bit of a dichotomy zodiac sign <laughs> yeah um okay so, so true how do yeah. you like to, uh, I, I kind of want to let you take the wheel of how you want to start your little, uh, lecture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so just, you know, analyzing the, I mean, we can take, again, look at the four elements, mm -hmm. uh, of, you know, fire, air, water, and earth, and, and just start to analyze them. Uh, you know, for you, you know, from a from a physiological perspective, or how we understand them, how we interact with them as human beings, even in our daily life, and then seeing how that correlates and extends on a psychological level to human behavior, 
uh, human expression and so on and so forth. Okay, let's um, do it. So yeah. Um, <laughs> so let, let's start with the fire signs. Okay. Um, so the fire signs uh again are aries leo and sagittarius Mm -hmm. uh now when we look at fire okay so fire is if we just look at fire from a you know physiological perspective uh fire is something that keeps us warm it's hot right it's burning it's blazing um so it keeps us warm so we need fire to heat up our food heat up our homes depending which uh, particular geographical location but even if we live in in very hot places well we still identify with something being hot, the weather being hot, the sun is hot, uh, uh, which rules the sign of Leo, which is a fire sign. So there's something quite heated about it. There's something quite dynamic about fire signs. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's oh, What else does fire do? Fire gives us light. Um, so it's quite interesting because we use words like enlightenment. Mm. You know, uh, 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 so that's that's fire. That's Um, interesting that it's more on the fire side as opposed to another element. I mean, I guess you can have an enlight you can have enlightenment in different ways. Like you can have enlightenment through studying, which could be air. Of course, of course. Through intuition, which could be water, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but with fire, it's a different enlightenment. It's a different. it, It that's why fire signs that they're very good visionaries. They, they, mm-hmm. they can see the potential of something mm. before it's even actualized. Fire signs have that gift. Um, and, but why but, is it fire that has that gift? Because it's the power to see? Because of, of light? Yeah, because it's that spark. It's that mm-hmm. spark of... Uh, it's quite interesting, like, when we look, at, depending which religious uh, you know, uh, you know, background one is coming from, you, you, you know, very often, like, in creation, they speak about you know, fire, like light being one of the first things that if you want to say God or the creator created, you Mm -hmm. know, there's something about light coming first because light represents that initial spark, that divinity that is, is good. is like the beginning. Mm -hmm. So there's no coincidence why Aries is is the, is the first Zodiac sign. And it starts with fire because it's that Mm -hmm. initial spark. It's that the initial, bang like okay we're seeing it you see Mm -hmm. um there's something that we see there's something that we acknowledge uh we see a potency um around you know what fire uh, uh, you know we see the illumination Mm um um to to begin the day what what starts the day Uh, you know the the sunrise right it's when the sun's coming over the horizon so the first thing we see is fire we see this big ball of fire coming over the eastern horizon, which marks the beginning of our day, which marks the start of our day. So there's something there about fire, mm-hmm. uh, about spirit. Um, people speak about spirit and physical, and it's, the, it's almost like the spirit always kind of takes precedence in terms of coming first. It's that spirit. We wake up. When we wake up in the morning, we open our eyes. There is something we're awoken to something that something is illuminated inside of us you know we, we cor- uh, the body even corresponds with the cycle of the sun you so know. mom are you okay i would love my mom to tell us what she's gathering from this about fire <laughs> um i don't know why but i thought sagittarius was not a fire sign for some reason Oh, it's fire. <laughs> uh, and I was just thinking of a show that I was watching yesterday and it said that fire signs mm-hmm. um connect with triangle shaped crystals. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know how to answer that. Uh, yeah. And then there's like <laughs> crystals according to um each element which right. i don't remember but it's in a sh- it's in a, a series of shows that but I can you watching. summarize what he just like how he described fire energy no i can't <laughs> <laughs> that's mom for you mom has uh... <laughs> 
fire energy. Let's give her some some points to hit. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's interesting that she spoke about the triangle. And the triangle, again, pointing upwards is a symbol of fire. And again, it's pointing up. There's something about it, which is, you know, fire burnt. When it burns, it, it goes upwards. It, mm. it it blazes. There's there's something about that fire that's mm. it's uplifting. It's high spirited. So and maybe why, also like, like consuming, like you want more and more. And that's like this. Yeah, exactly. Going upwards. Exactly. Upwards. Right. So um, there's something about fire that is very dynamic. Um, it's it's illuminating. It's it's there's something about it. It's it, there's something about fire. If you light a fire, it, it, it's quite interesting how it gets a certain attention. There's something about light. Mm. Yeah, it's it draws emblem of every... fire that that it it, it attracts. Yeah. It just attracts things. It a has to a kind name. of yeah moths and stuff like. That. So there's something about light and fire that it's magnetic. And it's it necessary attracts. for life. Like we need uh, it. Of course. We need it. We need it. Yeah. Right? You know, it's it's that, you know, it's like, it's quite interesting when, like when, for example, when people die, it, it's quite interesting. I've even heard doctors say like, th there's just something like, something leaves the body. And, and it's quite interesting because obviously when somebody's dead, the body's cold. You know, mm. it, it doesn't have no life in it. There's mm. no, they, they, warm. They, they, yeah, yeah, it's warm. So again, we need this warmth. But what about now, lizards? Yeah, they, <laughs> yeah, 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 lizards and snakes. I mean, they are they are cold blooded, uh -huh. but they still need to rely on what oh, they like right. warm. They like snakes like to come out in where it's warm, where they can get a bit of warm. Yeah, they hide in secretive places, and you know that's their element of survival, and they are cold blooded. But they thrive in, they like places where they're warm, you know, where they can mm -hmm. keep warm. So they, they are still looking for this warm or this heat. Yeah. Like maybe we have, the, we have the heat in us and they're getting it externally. Exactly. Exactly. But either way, exactly. you need it to live. You, you, need, you need that heat. You can't and, do without it. So, mom, do you understand why we're even telling you all of this stuff? <laughs> Well, let me think about this. <laughs> so, like I was telling Amber the other day, I'm like, I know that I am an air sign because I'm an airhead. Right. <laughs> I don't remember that conversation. Uh, <laughs> and that's how I remember my element. But everybody else's element, I don't really care about because they're not Aquarius. But you have, <laughs> here's the thing, you have all of the signs within you, yes. you know, your whole chart, you know, the circle chart, mom, where it's, where it has yeah. all the different zodiac signs and all the planets, mm. you have fire planets in your chart. Your, your Saturn is in Aries, which is a fire sign. Um, you, everybody has a Mars sign that Mars is a fire yeah. planet. Your sun yeah. is a fire planet. Yeah, fiery planet, yeah. And so you have to understand what the elements do if you want to understand all of the pieces of who you are. Because you're not uh, just air. You're not just one thing. You are a totality. That, that, that's a dominant part of you. Yes. It, it, it's, it's an essential part of you. Mm -hmm. It's a more emphasis part of you. But you do have fire in your life. You are going to, even if you're going to attract it through other people, it's still a part of who you are. And if you need more fire in your life, you need to understand what those traits might be. To yeah. So if you're like, oh, my, um, you know, people always walk all over me all the time. And I don't know how to stand up for myself. Like, oh, you need more fire in your life. You need this, this, and this. Um, that might be nice to talk about, well, like what it looks like when an element is lacking, or if it's too yeah, much. Yeah, 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 yeah. That 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 is that is. Um, but uh, how again. do you get it? How do you get it if you're not it? You're air. You well, <laughs> so that's that's very interesting. Well, what what will tend to happen is if you don't have it or you lack it in some way, shape, or form you will tend to attract it in other people. 
Mm-hmm. So you will tend to attract like partners or close yeah. friends. She or was colleagues. married to a Leo and an Aries. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so that's you attracting the fire. Uh-huh. <laughs> but but uh, you know, it's based on the idea that you are what you are what you attract. So there was no coincidences of you attracting a Leo and an Aries into your life. And what they were just doing was just, uh, yeah, of course they were fire signs, but they were just mirroring aspects of you that either you found difficult to access or you couldn't be bothered to access it. So <laughs> somebody else is accessing it for you. Or that's it's repressed. It yeah, that's it's repressed mm-hmm. or it's hidden. Or it's not something very easily accessible for you, yeah. you know, depending where those planets are or where those houses are in your chart. So then you attract somebody else. So somebody else is going to come and say, all right, you ain't got it. I will live it out for you for that time. And okay. it's interesting for me because I don't have any planets in any fire signs. Wow. Um, Unless they're like little random things like asteroids or something okay right right um (laughs) um, but i do have like jupiter conjunct mars so it's like there's some extra like so there's like i'm getting my fire in other ways that is not yeah yeah like you're or any of your angles on fire uh, fire yeah my descendant is leo Ah, okay, okay. So there's so mm-hmm. so so yeah. There's so some again, stuff. so you're gonna yeah, so you're gonna attract that through other people. So the descendants the other, mm-hmm. it's the partner, it's your 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 husband, potential marriage, or mm-hmm. any significant person in your life can also be clients or people who you work with or and the other people, way that I see it is yeah. that it's my so the ascendant being your external self and then the descendant being right. more your internal self. Right. And yeah. most people can't yeah. access their internal, so they seek it externally. Exactly. Yeah. So they project. That's why the seventh house is the projection, or the descended is what we project. Mm-hmm. So then you attract it in other people, but it's really you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you but know, anyways, yeah. I bring I bring that up because, um, I uh, I think it's important for me to learn about fire energy because it's something that. I'm going to be really stagnant otherwise if I don't like find ways to bring it into my life. Right. Yeah. So we have to learn about it because we need the balance of all the different elements. Yeah, definitely. No doubt. Uh, very important. So fire is necessary. It's the, it's the, it's the life of life. It's the life of the party. It's the <laughs> initial spark. Mm-hmm. it's the passions it's the heated stuff that mm, is necessary passion. um mm-hmm. it's illuminating and it provides adventure um so the fire signs are you know or the fire element or the element of fire we can see it that it's necessary in our daily life no yeah. fire no sun no life as we know it And then I think a simple way to like bring this knowledge of the elements into actually using it practically with um, the signs is like all of the Aries, all of the Sagittarius's, all of the Leo's are going to be like this, this, and this. They're going to be, uh, you know, seeking warmth. They're going to be seeking illumination. And, and, um, and so um yeah these are these are all of the traits of the fire signs but also yeah. like the fire planets too right yeah yeah <laughs> yeah definitely yeah yeah which are sun sun and mars and uh, jupiter as well we could say to some degree as well yeah what's up with jupiter <laughs> <laughs> oh god you're crazy you're so crazy yeah jupiter's He's fiery, but water, water too. So yeah, he's there. Yeah, because it's a gas planet, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He is. He is. So he's, okay. he's, got, he's got both. He's got both. He's fiery too. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so did we cover fire, Mom? Are you still confused about fire? No. Are you sure about I was, that? <laughs> I wasn't confused about 
except for that I thought that Sag Sagittarius was oh, it wasn't a fire sign. Something else. Right, right, yeah, right, that was yeah, the only yeah. thing. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm good on the fire side, and I can't wait till you get to the air sign. Air, well, that will be next. <laughs> <laughs> we should talk about air next. Or maybe we should leave air to last. But uh, <laughs> like keep you like Damn waiting, it. anticipating, Damn like, it. you know. <laughs> she'll okay. be too, she'll be too distracted thinking about airtime the whole the whole yeah. time you talk about maybe the we other stuff. Go air next. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so air um Air is, um, we have the air signs. So like I was saying earlier on, out of the four elements, there's something quite unique. Again, and that's with all the elements. There's something that makes them stand out, that makes them unique in their own right. So air, again, from a, you know, is the only one that we cannot see with the naked eye. Mm. Um, it's air, it's oxygen. Um, if we think of air as, well, we need to breathe. Uh, without that, nothing can move. Nothing can exist. The air signs essentially are what makes things animate. Mm. It's air that makes things move. So air is connected with animation. Air is connected with spirit in a sense um air is um something air has always been associated with knowledge mm -hmm. information communication air is what connects on that mental plane it's what connects us so mm -hmm. air is everywhere as we know air can just think be... of like if you're if you're standing in front of me and you're breathing, I'm yeah. like taking that air. I'm breathing and, that same and, right, thing. right, right. Yeah, it, it's it, it's interesting to know that the air is everywhere. There are certain places on the planet where there's no water, or there's no earth, mm -hmm. or or there may be a uh, uh, very little heat, but air is there. There's no, there's no place on on planet Earth where you cannot find air. Air has even to be under there. the sea. Well, okay, even <laughs> under the sea, even <laughs> under the sea, there's there's elements of oxygen there. Hmm. Um, so and air, there's oxygen air, in air, fire. Air, air, air is air is everywhere. It it gets into everything and mm. everywhere. Because um, is it consciousness itself? Yes. It's conscious of itself. No, consciousness. Yes. Like everything on, in existence is consciousness. That's correct. And so is air just like the physical expression of consciousness? Um, hmm, no, I wouldn't <laughs> say that. That's a deep question. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, it's a good question. It's a deep question. I wouldn't say that. Okay. I, I wouldn't say that. I would say it's a... It's it's definitely a strong symbolic uh 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 totem of consciousness, but uh and it's a it's a vicaria of consciousness. Mm. Uh but it's not consciousness itself. Okay. Um but yeah, but there's strong ties to it. Air 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 connects, air gets in things. This is why air signs are very good at solving problems because air needs to understand. Air signs are about understanding. Air signs hate it when they don't understand something. It frustrates the hell out of them. Yeah. <laughs> because they, they, they have to know what, what is the, how do I get in there? And what, what, mm. what how does that, how is that working? And because <laughs> their purpose is to connect and to animate and to make things move. That makes me think of even um, in uh, oh, what's it called? Yeah. Um, the like the chi of a house, like right. the the chi wants to flow around the house, and then if you have a right. lot of clutter and stuff, then right. the chi can't move around. 
Exactly. And, and so that's when things start to stagnate is when the chi cannot move around because you've got all this stuff everywhere. Exactly. And so the energy of a room might feel totally gross. And it's because like open some windows, get some air in there, move, exactly. like, clean the stuff out of the way so that the, so that the air can flow so that the chi can go to everywhere that it needs to go. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. Exactly. Uh, um, so, um, so even so, air is everywhere. Uh, you know, you spoke you spoke about water. Water is H two O, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the the makeup of it, oxygen's there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you're gonna, you know. So the air is everywhere. It needs it needs to be because <laughs> without it, nothing can be animated. That's why the symbol for Aquarius, uh, the shorthand of it is the is the two waves. Mm -hmm. And people, that's why people get a bit confused because they hear the word Aquarius and they hear the word aqua. And then they look at the right. symbol of Aquarius and they see the wave and they go, yeah. isn't that a water sign? Uh -huh. No, it ain't. Uh, what it is, it's the water bearer. So what people don't understand about the sign of Aquarius is Aquarius is symbolic. He, it, the water bearer is pouring the jug of water because he's letting you know. And that's why the symbol for Aquarius is the waves because a, a, the, it's the air that is moving the waters. It's animating. Mm. So, so Aquarius <laughs> has a consciousness which animates humanity. It makes people move. It connects through information, through knowledge, mm -hmm. through vo vocabulary. It, that's how things spread. Things spread throughout the world has become what it is today through information if i teach you this and i take this information over there and you know uh, uh um and that's why mercury who is one of the rulers of the major air signs gemini is the one that connects everything that you know mm -hmm. because that's where the information is without the information we're doomed so is mercury an air planet yeah oh yeah yeah very airy yeah he's very airy you know, and that's why, even from a mythological perspective, Mercury was the only planet and is the only planet that was allowed to go anywhere. He could go anywhere. He could go into the underworld, into the land of the dead and come back out again. No, no other deity could do that. Mm -hmm. You know, when you went down into that underworld, you're in the hell, realm of Hades. That's it. You ain't coming back out. You're dead. You know, but Mercury was the only one. Hermes was the only one who was allowed to go there, here, there, and everywhere. He could not be stopped. He could not be. And that's why even in today's, that's why you hear the terminology, don't shoot the messenger. You can't shoot the messenger. How are you going to shoot the messenger? Mm -hmm. uh, that this is why reporters and, and people who deal with information, they can go into the heart of war they don't get killed you, you're not supposed mm -hmm. to it has happened that they've killed them but they're not they don't get killed because you're a reporter we can't shoot the person who's giving them they're they're reporting on something they just come to give them so you can't kill them you know so it, it, you know it's 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 you know part of the the ethos the ethics the law the knowledge that you don't do that so mercury is this planet that is very airy extremely very airy mm -hmm. and i even you know. think of like um air energy as being vibes and like sound waves and like all of those uh yeah like microwaves and it like all right. of all of this stuff that's around us that is doing things and like you right. can or like you can turn on a radio and you can access these different levels of wave lengths and i feel like those are that that all has to do with like when i when i was studying aquarius energy right i was like aquarius energy can tap into these higher realms of like air and and they can tap into these these like these spaces of right. thinking that other people can't access because right. if you think of it like a radio station, other people have their radio tuned into this one frequency and then Aquarius right. can tap into all yeah. these other frequencies. Right. And so I, that's what I think of when I think of it, Aquarius being an air sign, it's like they have this power over 
these different frequencies that they can tap into. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Makes makes perfect sense. Totally um, makes sense so perfectly. Yeah. So the is that a sarcasm? That, 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 yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> I like that one. Is that sarcasm? I'm quoting him. mom. <laughs> Quote. Well, what did okay, mom, how do you summarize air right now? Yeah, even like what you said, like when you're thinking of like tunes, uh, like sound baths and yeah, like uh, tuning forks, like sounds in the air. Yeah, like I'm everywhere. I'm yeah. always everywhere and also nowhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> air, 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 air clings to nothing that's why they are detached mm -hmm. they cling to nothing because once you cling to something you become stagnant you become limited you can't move so no mm -hmm. air signs don't do that so that's mm -hmm. why air signs will tend to be the ones in the party they may not necessarily be light light bringers like that fire signs they may not be the quote unquote life of the party, but they are the connectors and the networkers of the party. They'll be, oh, hello, how you doing? They'll flirt around and, oh, how you doing, Joanne? How you doing? Oh, hello, John. You know, the air signs will be the ones that do that. Like this and podcast. My mom is the air, like she's an air sign and she is the inventor of this podcast. Right. She, and see, like there we go. All these people. <laughs> connecting. Uh -huh. Connecting because what what is more powerful than the internet, and to and to get internet your voice is another air, good air energy, you know, voice is air. Once you're communicating, you're dealing with air. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, um, uh, it's communication, it's networking, uh, uh, it's connecting. Air signs need to connect. That is their job to connect. If there's no connectors, forget it. And that's why Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. He mm. cleaves to the sun because he works for the sun. He's mm. the one communicating what the sun, whatever energy the sun is radiating, it's Mercury that is bringing that message and saying, here is what it is. So without Mercury, we're screwed. Wait, so I want to understand this. In a, in, so, so the sun is radiating light and light. fire energy. Right. And... And then Mercury is gathering that, and then yes, Mercury is the interpreter of that. Oh, so the Mercury interpreter is the, of it. Right, he's 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 gathering that energy and he's interpreting it to us. So we take it and then we understand. Oh, that's what it is. Oh, and, and then, then so then we're like, it's like, uh, because everything around us is light. Every, like everything right, physical exactly. is built out of light. Yes. But right. there's something in our mind that is computing these light beams, and we're like, right. "Oh, this is a yeah. table. This yeah. is yeah. a yeah. This is a trash can." R and right. so Mercury is that 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 mechanism that is translating exactly. The light he's the, he's the one teaching us exactly. That's very cool. <laughs> so again, all about that 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 air making that connection. So. All of the planets that rule the air signs are about connecting. Yeah. And translating. And, and, and translate and building. Uh um with the Aquarius, it tends to do it more on a on a on a bigger scale. I mean, it's ruled by Saturn and Uranus, so it tends to do it more on a on a more group scale or more social scale. Fair mm -hmm. enough. But either way, it's still bringing that element of progress civilization knowledge so uranus we would say would is it another air energy oh yeah he's very airy mm -hmm. he's extremely airy is there any other air planets that we're missing here <laughs> um th those are the ones mercury right. venus saturn and uranus the, oh venus airy. is air too oh yeah she, she she's oh, because oh, very it's airy the libra Oh man, she's very. She rules. I Libra. think of her as like Earth energy, though. She is Earth. She is Earth. She she is both, but she's air also as well. Mm. She's very airy. Right. And who are the, the other? Sorry. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Who no, are no, the ahead. other um, zodiac signs that are air signs? 
So so Libra. it's Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. That's it. Those are the oh. three essences. Each oh. element is rules three signs. Three signs. Yeah. Each element will have three I signs. I remember that. Okay. Right. So okay. Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. So yeah, think is very. Uh, so that's it's quite interesting sometimes when people say, "Oh, Libras, they're so romantic." No, they're not. <laughs> oh, straight from the straight from the Libra's <laughs> mouth. Like, uh... like, you know. So because of that Venusian kind of energy, we like to say, "Oh, yeah, they're so romantic," and they're... hell no, they're not <laughs> romantic. They're... No, no, they ain't. They're quite detached, actually. Maybe like calculated in the yeah. type of romantic. Yeah. I mean, moves don't get me wrong. Do. Yeah, they're, they're very idealistic. They like the idea of love, but it's a detached side. Don't get it confused. Mm. Don't get it confused. That's why Libras will like, oh, they'll go and talk to this person and go and flirt with this person and go and flirt with that person <laughs> also as well. That ain't no man. They're not, they're not, they're not, that's water. That's Pisces stuff. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm a they Pisces. They get caught up so... in the bushy stuff. That's a, that's a, they're not like that. Uh -huh. not, I have my Venus in Pisces like too, so I'm no, like right, right, exactly. Yeah, so the most, <laughs> the most, yeah, like... the most, you know, the exalted one, the perfect lover, loves all that mushy <laughs> stuff from uh -huh. buying flowers. Yeah, like, if you're oh, not yeah, romantic, like, yeah. get out of my life. Yeah, people like, <laughs> oh, Libras are romantic. It's like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom's you know. Venus is yeah. what's oh my mom has Scorpio. Oh really? Mm -hmm. She has Venus in Scorpio. You yeah, sure? Scorpio. Oh wait, what does that mean? No, oh no 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 no. no. She no. has her Mar no. She has her Venus in Aries and yes, her Mars in Scorpio. Yeah, yeah. Mars and Mars is in Scorpio. Oh God. Mm -hmm. Oh, so yeah. she's got. Dun, dun, dun. Either way, <laughs> I knew it was a, not a, the best placement for Venus to be because yeah. it's a fire sign and Venus the is fire not. Sign. So you see, so again, so her Venus is in a fire sign. And like you said, she's been with her Aries and a Leo. Mm -hmm. So she attract, she likes that fire. Yes, mom. So your I Venus guess. tells you about what you're attracted to, what you find exactly. beautiful. And she likes it. She and loves so it. You love that fire energy. You love I the fire. Don't. That's why you keep attracting it. <laughs> yeah, right. Prove me otherwise. Go and get yourself a nice mushy water sign. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> What's a Capricorn? Earth sign. Earth. Earth. Let's do. Shall we Earth. move I on like to the Earth. next sign now? Or I like, like Earth element? signs. Yeah. Okay. So well, yeah, we could talk about them next. Yeah, let's talk about them next. Yeah. So the Earth, right? Yes. Earth energy. So when we think of Earth, Mother Earth. Um, now, Earth is something we walk on the Earth. So Earth is a zodiac, uh, are the signs, again, it's Taurus, it's Virgo, it's Capricorn, and those signs are earthy. So they deal with physical manifestation. Mm -hmm. We walk on the Earth. So Earth is something that supports us. Um, we eat food. These are all physical things. Mm -hmm. We need clothes. We need shelter. You know, we like to touch each other physically, whether it's sexually or not. But on that physical, that, that physical being is something that we operate in that physical world. So we need it. So earth signs are something which ground us, which support us, um, which allow us to be in touch with the physical world, with mm -hmm. the senses, whether it's the physical body or the physical world, whether it's a building or or a car or money or whatever it is, that physical world is what the earth signs are about. Yeah, like attuned to physical yeah. needs and yes, at, like yeah, because right now um, I'm hanging out with a person that is uh, an earth sign, and keep, they keep being very aware of like. Oh, you need more water. Oh, you need more this. Oh, yeah, like it's yeah, very yeah. like, oh, like I see this physical thing in front of you. It yeah, needs you, some yeah. attention. I will attention. Yeah, 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 I will yeah. make sure that this is dealt with. <laughs> yeah. They're they're very, they're very 
very pragmatic and very practical. practical. Everything's earthy. Uh, uh, um, they they don't they're not like the air signs where they they, they don't like all that pie in the sky and problems. No, 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 no don't give me that. They, earth signs like simple. It's mm-hmm. calculated. It can be measured. They like things that we can measure that. Yeah. You know, it can be quantified. We can feel it. We can touch it. Mm-hmm. You know, that is what the, uh, the the earth signs are essentially, you know, that's what they're about. To, 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 to be connected with the physical senses. Yeah. Taste, smell, touch. You know, that, that's their world. That's mm-hmm. where, where they operate in. And if they can't calculate it, if they can't measure it, if it can't be organized, if it can't be simple... Uh, um, then, you know, they, they lose it. Uh, um, they don't like or they don't deal with chaos too well. I also um, think that's of, why they like orderly things. Yeah. I, I also think of like, where is the energy <laughs> sitting? Like with air signs, the energy is up here. And so like, it's the mental space. It's like, it could like, it could be like talking with aliens, you know, it's like up there. It's, yeah, it's, exactly. Uh, yeah. And then yeah. with, with earth, it's like, right here I'm yeah, looking exactly. at you right in front of you're 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 present with me i yeah. can touch you and any kind of la la woo woo thing over there i don't care about that i care about what is directly in yeah. front of me can i touch yeah. it can i smell it yes yeah, they, yeah they're concerned with the here and now yeah yeah they, they, they're concerned with the present uh you know uh um fire signs air signs can be concerned with the future and what is to come and with mm-hmm. all that, you know, what's the possibility. And, you know, and because fire has that vision, they can spot things. They're visionary. Yeah. They yeah. They're the like wanting to charge and like, exactly. And like I gotta, I gotta reach that far away goal. Like, yeah. Yeah. But, the, but, but an earth sign, like they're, they're in the here and now, like you, you can't take an earth sign to, if you took an earth, earth sign to a house that was not fully done up and, you know, uh, you know, if you took a fire sign there, they, they can see the potential. They can say, oh, yeah, I can, if I turn down that wall and I put that up, yeah, yeah I can do something with that. Yeah, I can, they, they can see the potential. An earth sign won't see it. An earth sign will say, yeah, yeah, what's this? Like, no, it ain't done. It's like, it's not finished. It's not done properly. It needs fixing. No, 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 I'm not going to buy this house and, you know, and, and walk out. Because they, they want something, it's it's ready, it's complete, it's physical, it's yeah. something that you know, it's 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 functioning. That and would the you earth say, signs are concerned with something functioning. Would you say that earth has most to do with money and most definitely like tangible stuff that you can yeah, ta- yeah exactly that that's what they're dealing with. They're dealing with the world of the tangible, what that which is tangible. Mm-hmm. So money is a part of that. That's why earth signs are very much concerned with, they can be very security orientated. Right. You know, um, you know. My I'm mom has a live, Taurus but... rising. Ooh. So like she's that. got one so earth quite thing. Earthy. That's quite earthy. <laughs> that's quite earthy. That's somebody who's like, a... so it's interesting because she even said, she alluded earlier on, she goes, I like the earth signs. Well, mm-hmm. duh. You're a Taurus rising. <laughs> <laughs> of course you like the earth signs. You're earth sign rising. <laughs> I didn't know that. So she loves, here's the things that I notice about my mom that's earth energy. She right. loves shopping. She loves stuff. And right. she loves, like, she wants to, um, like, start farming. She loves like chickens and she wants to like she she loves the tangible physical world but then right. she also is very aquarius where she loves the la la wee woo wah 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 right, right, stuff right, too right, yeah, yeah but she like she could shop for a hundred hours she she has a million billion crystals <laughs> in her house taurus <laughs> yeah, she just has a bill like she has her own shop she's because she loves stores she loves things well, Right, yeah. Loves pretty that, little that, that, things like crystals. And, that, and that's exactly what Taurus is about. Taurus mm-hmm. likes beautiful things. Libra, air sign, likes beautiful people. Taurus mm-hmm. likes beautiful things. Mm-hmm. That's the difference. Mm-hmm. That is still Venus ruled, but that's the difference. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Mom? <laughs> I love it. I 
love it. Miss Taurus <laughs> Rising. <laughs> I love now, it. now are you seeing the value of learning the other elements besides yeah. the hair? Yeah, but I don't get it when your guys are talking about like the planet is a he or a planet is a she. Well, let's save yeah. that for an episode where you learn about planets. All right. right now yeah. you're just learning yeah. about elements. Yeah, the, 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 right. the, to just put it simply, it's just that they they are masculine and feminine. That that that's that's a simplistic element oh. around it. Because, because they have a yeah yeah. I know. I remember something about like signs also have this cardinal fixed whatever that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's immutable. another. Yeah. That's for another time. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I have to learn so much. <laughs> you gotta learn the elements first, and then, gotta learn the elements first. To understand the elements, and then so when <laughs> then you could pair the knowledge of the elements with the cardinal and with the planets, yeah. and then you have a full picture of what each yeah. sign is all about. But right now, right. just learning the elements. And I, and I can see how she doesn't identify with the fire. Yeah. You see, because, right, yeah, I, I, can, I, I knew what it is in her chart because she can't, she doesn't identify with the fire, even though she's attracted them as partners, mm -hmm. you know, the Aries and the, the Leo, because she's Taurus rising, right? And mm -hmm. she has Venus in Aries, mm -hmm. which means Venus is in her 12th house, which right. is a hidden. Late. she's got so and she's got saturn there too right Ex right so yeah. it's in the 12th house so it's behind her she it's unconscious with her mm -hmm. it's suppressed <laughs> but it's yet suppressed. It's, keep, it's suppressed but but she, yet she keeps attracting it yep <laughs> <laughs> she keeps attracting it so no, she's like i don't like this fire it. stuff but yet <laughs> hello you yep. know, handsome man comes along and like he happens to be a fire sign. She <laughs> loves like men in uniform, like cops and firefighters and like very. Of course like... she does. She's Taurus <laughs> rising. She's Taurus rising, which means she's got Scorpio on the seventh house yeah. cast. And, and Scorpio is ruled by Mars. So she likes Martian men. Yeah, she Scorpio loves the yeah. Martians. <laughs> <laughs> <I do>. <laughs> <laughs> okay let's do let's do water um because we've well, yeah so let's yeah. do water so water um is very interesting um in terms of elements it's it's a substance so it's an element that's very fluid mm -hmm. right um hence why water is linked with emotions um water is known to be it's quite interesting water is soft on one level but on another mm -hmm. um is also very powerful and you know yeah. it's it's very gentle on one level but it could also kill you on another i mean we've mm -hmm. seen like horrific incidences maybe with you know maybe hurricanes or floods and things of that nature or you know sometimes in some of these movies and you're in the middle of the ocean, but there's something about it because you touch water and it's just like, you can run your hand through it. It's just so soft mm -hmm. and so gentle, but at the same time, extremely powerful. Powerful. And, 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 and I don't know if, like I always say, like if you just want to get, go out, it's go out on a boat or in a cruise and just look at the vast amounts mm -hmm. of water. It's really mind boggling and mind like wow like it's 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 so deep and so yeah so water yeah. Ha has this real sensitivity um emotional fluid uh, uh ability and let's not forget the human body is 75 percent yeah, water we are water so yeah. we see how water starts to get it's unique water is very fertile Without water, no crops can grow. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't live. You're dehydrated. We know what happens to the body. So water, again, it, so it's interesting, again, when we go to, water is very mysterious. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is why they, uh, the um, the uh, ocean, the uh, water uh, biologists have said that we only know of about 10% of what is in the ocean. Mm. So there's another 90% we have no knowledge about. There's creatures, there's things beneath that, those waters 
I mean, could you imagine? I mean, just from a physiological perspective, how many ships have sunk over the mm-hmm. years? And uh, what, what is beneath there? Like yeah. there's gold, there's diamonds, there's precious metals, there's there dinosaurs. Must be, there, 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 yeah, there must be huge, <laughs> huge amongst in the ocean. It's like, but it's really mysterious. We can't know. So there's something about water which is, you know, little bits of transparency and mystery and mm-hmm. hidden things and 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 you know when people want to hide things, where do they put it? in the water Ooh, with all these secrets. dodgy companies you know they want to think put it in the ocean or the mafia oh we got want to get rid of a dead body put it in the ocean right so water becomes a place where people hide things and it also like deteriorates exactly too. exactly so water is a very interesting mm. element also as well quite amazing again unique unto itself yeah so like too much water energy can just destroy you slowly and so like so water energy is emotions and like i'm a pisces like you could hold trauma like you could be that sea that holds all those secrets and wounds and spooky stuff exactly and and those things having too much of that water like that dirty water inside it can like deteriorate everything inside it you could it can exactly create all these health issues and mental issues right and- yeah exactly so what water water provides what water does it connects us but not like the air signs mm-hmm. it's a different connection it's an emotional connection mm-hmm. but water is what is what it, it water air signs connect because there's a gnosis it's about knowledge mm-hmm. it's about knowing Water signs are not concerned with gnosis. They're concerned with feeling. Right. I gotta feel it. I yeah. don't care what I know about you. That's me. <laughs> if I feel it, if it feels good, I'm going with it. End yeah. of story. I have you an know. example of that. Yeah. So um everybody in the whole world wanted to tell me to get a job. Right. And my intuition was like, it doesn't feel right. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. But- <laughs> and and then people were like, oh my God, like you're gonna make yourself into a homeless person. And <laughs> like, why don't you just do this logical thing? Logic. Right, yeah. And yeah, my intuition yeah. was like, no, <laughs> I no. just, I, it doesn't feel right. <laughs> and so, like, Pisces, like the intuition wins, the water wins. Exactly. Exactly. So, there, there, there we have it you know so water is connecting whether it, it moves intuitively and it's connecting us on an emotional level it makes us recognize family it connects us mm. with a sense of belonging and care it con- the, the, and-, and care so elements of compassion mm-hmm. sensitivity empathy receptivity are all a part of the water component. And what's the difference between a water sign being compassionate versus an air sign being compassionate? Because I feel like an air yeah, sign yeah. can logically know, oh, I should do this nice thing. But right, because it makes sense, because it adds up, because it's, again, there's a knowledge around it. There's a gnosis that, well, if you don't do that, um, this can happen as a result. Mm-hmm. So with the air signs, it, it rationalizes or it understands from a, whether you want to say a theoretical perspective or from a gnosis or knowledge perspective that it needs to do that. But it's not necessarily through feeling. Mm-hmm. A, a, a word of sign feels it. Uh, uh, you you see, it, it, it's automatic with the word of sign. The, uh, the emp empathy and the compassion is is naturally built in it mm-hmm. thrives off that and i feel like water energy is the thing that has been so condemned in society that it's hard for people to even access their own water energy like, exactly it's hard for people to trust their intuition and to take action based off of what they feel they should do when their external reality is telling them you know 
you got to do this, you got to do that. But right, exactly. inside their feelings, their water energy is telling them something different. And it's hard for people to trust in that. It's hard to trust something so mysterious and unknown. Unknown. Well, well, that's what it is. And you see, uh, you've hit the nail on the head there with that, again, especially with that word unknown. Mm -hmm. And the waters do take us into the place of the unknown. And in order to be able to go into a place of the unknown, number one, you have to let go. You have to be receptive. And when you do those things, it puts you in a very vulnerable place. And people don't like to feel or be vulnerable. No. So they guard against it. Mm -hmm. So society has now created these defense mechanisms which are trying to protect you from being vulnerable. However, we're talking about water signs here. Or we're talking about the element of water. So what ends up happening? Water will just end up flooding or eroding it anyway. Mm -hmm. Because you can't stop water. Yeah, if you have a flood in your basement and you're like, oh, oh, I don't really yeah, want to look right. at this. Exactly. It's still gonna it's still exactly. gonna damage everything. <laughs> exactly. Or you get that crack in the ceiling yeah. or in the wall and the damp starts coming in and the water starts coming mm -hmm. in. Hello, buddy. No, 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 no. People no, 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 wonder no. why they have all these like uh issues that stem from emotional trauma exactly. and they wonder what why is my basement flooded it's because you didn't get the water out you just exactly. left it there. <laughs> exactly exactly so water has to be it has to be acknowledged it has to be okay we can try to contain it to some degree uh um uh, we try to contain it to some degree uh, on some elements we can contain some water but you can't contain you, you can't contain the emotion. Emotions are not something to just push aside or to hide or to uh, lock up somewhere. Mm -hmm. You can't do it. Right. You know, and that's where the Scorpio, when you lock up water, when water becomes stagnant, mm -hmm. we know what happens. Mm -hmm. All other kind of creepy crawlies and bacteria and diseases yeah. start coming out of that and you wind up getting in a mess. Hmm. So Scor I never thought of Scorpio as like the um like the tall tale of like what can happen when you let water ferment or like Exactly. It's like, right, right. Oh you'll you'll be a spooky witch if <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly because 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 water sign water is meant to, water is fluid. We right. think of what you'd think of a running river, a moving ocean. So when you get like that's why in there's a place in Israel or in, in between Israel and Jordan, and it's known as the Dead Sea. Because it's just sitting there. It's it's sitting there. It, it doesn't. All waters, all lakes and rivers lead from one into another and go into the ocean, mm -hmm. not the Dead Sea. Oh, interesting. Water, water, right, water goes into the Dead Sea, but doesn't come out of the Dead oh. Sea. Oh, so it's like a Scorpio sea. So it's like a Scorpio. <laughs> so it's full. So it's full of. That's why they call it the Dead Sea. Nothing is living there. Oh wow! But it's quite Scorpionic in a sense because it's extremely healing. It's got extremely healing properties yeah. because it's full of the sulfur because of the salt. Mm. So it's very. It's got very good healing properties that are good for the skin and for bathing and it's got really good mud that if you put on your you know your skin it you know does got very good healing property but there's nothing in there there's nothing that can live it's dead wow and then so that brings us to like another point that if you have some water placements like pisces or cancer or scorpio yeah. Healing needs to be a priority for you because Most you definitely. you're gonna have some stagnation otherwise. Yeah, and we need the water signs because they allow us. Like I said, they're they're the empathists. They 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 are the compassionate ones. They are the carers of our world, and without that, they are the nurturers. Hence, why Moon rules Cancer. They are the nurturers. They are the ones that look after us. They are our mothers that feed us, that nurture us. They are the nurses that look after us when we're sick. Again, healing again, you know. Mm -hmm. So the, the, those are the caretakers. Those are the care workers, maybe when we get old. 
Uh, um, so we need water. Without water, there's no nurturing. There's no caring. There's no compassion. Mm -hmm. There's no connectivity that I belong to this tribe or this family or this group of people. I belong to something bigger than me. It's the water signs that are, that allow us to acknowledge that and connect with that. Without that water, we are totally lost. Right. And um, I'm just thinking of the planets that are water energy, the moon. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Moon. Is Big Pluto planet. considered a water? Because it's yeah, made out well, of because ice? Of his, <laughs> because of, yeah, because of his link to, to Scorpio also as well. And again, he is the Lord of the underworld and there is water down there. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, so the, there is water down there. So yeah, yeah he is, he is, he, there is something watery Neptune about him. Neptune too. Uh, Neptune, definitely Lord of the ocean, God of the seas. Mm -hmm. Definitely Neptune, Poseidon, extremely watery. Don't get more water than that. Uh, and so is Jupiter, you know. Mm. You know, he does rule Pisces. He is the traditional ruler of Pisces. Right. He is exalted in Cancer. So there is something watery also mm. about Jupiter also as well. Jupiter is also watery too. What do, what do you think that could be, the like the water energy that Jupiter has? Because I don't really well, think about him as being watery. Yeah, well, well, the, 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 the water energy that he has is he's very fertile. Oh, <laughs> that's why Jupiter. That's why Jupiter, of all the gods in the mythology, he fathered more children than any other oh. deity. He's extremely. He is symbolic for fertility, and that's, that's a... why he's the planet of abundance and growth. Mm. When something is fertile, it grows. It comes in abundance. It's a good point to link fertility with water because what happens right. when you're about to be born? Your the waters break. But exactly, and the and the child is in the womb for nine months in a boat that sack of water. Yeah, in fluid fluidity. So mm -hmm. there's something about water. Water is like, and that's the thing. If you go to all of the, that's why about mis, what's mysterious about water. If you go to uh, uh, the beginning of all mythological stories of how the world was created it's quite interesting i don't care which mythology you want to pick or which religious story you want to pick there is always water in the beginning but mm. there's no explanation as to how it got there if you read the bible if you read greek mythology if you read any of the african stories they all speak about god coming down and creating this earth but there was water there first but then there's no explanation as well how did the water get there yeah and then uh, supposedly all the creatures on land used to be water creatures exactly we all used to be so, little so mermaids even swimming if, around. Using, <laughs> if you want to go by the, the theory of evolution the, the darwin kind of uh, theory again it's coming from water mm -hmm. everything starts with water yeah, just like we Everything come from starts, the waters exactly. in the womb of the mother. Right. So it is a very divine feminine kind of energy. Oh, right. It's extremely, it's the, it's the, even though they say Aries is the first zodiac sign, which happens to be fire, they say Aries is actually born out of the water of Pisces, Ooh. which actually precedes that. So the Pisces is behind. You don't see it because it's mysterious. Yeah, Aries brings that initial spark, but it's actually coming out of the water of Pisces. And it's like source mm -hmm. energy is what I think yeah. of water being too, like God. Yeah, it is. It's like collective. So water signs are like really like very, very powerful, but they get undermined because they're often linked with sensitivity yeah. You see, things like that, because of the feminine energy of the water, it's considered weak. But then a, you know, an, a raging tsunami cry. is not very weak. Yeah, ex well, exactly. <laughs> so when we cry, for example, that's water. That's a sign of emotions. So these things are being considered weak. Mm -hmm. You know, and because we've been trying to, we've been living in this patriarchy, kind of world and we want to dominate and the ego is like a uh, tough up man up and you know so if a guy cries what you you know you've come on you and then they'll use the p word or whatever and all this kind of stuff that you know again because the, it's it's a way of trying to you, you know block those emotions and and you yeah. can't do it and because if, what ends up happening is the flood just comes back in 
10 times more. So that's don't do it. something that riles me up too, is because like, there is so much power in feminine energy you can literally birth all life that is and and so there it's like the patriarchy came in and was like oh feminine energy and water energy is so weak oh it's just a little teardrop Ooh, wow but really what they're doing is they're trying to suppress those that storm that can also be water energy that can overpower them and take control and become a matriarchy again so it's in the best interest of the patriarchy to make water energy seem like it's weak exactly and and I actually another interesting thing with the water, even like when you you spoke about Neptune there mm-hmm. and things of like that, a lot all of the male deities that are connected with water, if you go back in the older, you find that it was actually females that were it was the goddesses that <sighs> ruled that. What happened was is the males took over when they married them, so the males would marry the the nymphs and the sea yeah. goddesses, and then they would take their attributes, uh. but they belong to the feminine. They're with the female. <laughs> yeah, I was always kind of confused over why Neptune was this dude and he rules over the seas. And I'm like, that doesn't seem yeah. very. That doesn't yeah, really yeah, yeah. Match. It's his wife. It belongs to his wife. Oh, man. interesting. <laughs> okay, mom, we want to know what you have to say about water energy now. <laughs> yeah. What do you got to say about water? Do you like it? (laughs) (laughs) Well, when you were saying like about how emotional they are, they have like a lot of emotion and it's water and their body is 75% water. Then I'm thinking like, yeah, they're so emotional. They even produce water coming out of their eyeballs. Yeah. <laughs> I love that that's what you got out of everything that we said. Yeah. No, I got other stuff too. Uh-huh. But then I started thinking off of the the topic of just water. Of course, right. I just can't stay on one topic. I'm thinking right. like, oh, uh, is this come from like um Greek mythology? Right. And yeah. that's what they're talking about. And and then I started thinking, like, <laughs> so where exactly did elements come from? And yeah. why did they pair up with three certain, like, how did they pair up with those three certain water people? Pisces yeah. and... Cancer like, and, and Scorpio. Yeah. and Yeah. <laughs> so... They were able to, so in terms of planets ruling signs, basically there is a, actually a, a, a particular geometric a geometric pattern, cosmic pattern, um, mm. which is known as the Thema Mundi, as to why though each planet rules the particular sign that it rules or presides over that particular sign. So there's a connection, there's an affinity with the nature of that planet and the nature of that sign that kind of go hand in hand and hence why they rule over these particular signs it's not Ah. like they just came across randomly but they were able to pick them based on um the the seasons uh because uh, they saw that the 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 summer solstice was the time of 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 uh of cancer uh when the sun was in the sign of cancer so that they they chose the moon to rule cancer and then the sun to rule leo and then from there they started to create they they they, they saw that the 12 divisions now were connected with the other planets so the other two signs outside of cancer and leo were gemini and virgo so that went to uh, mercury and then the other signs out of that were libra and, and taurus so that went to venus and then you you start to see a geometric pattern as to how they all connected Ooh, um, that yeah. sounds so magical yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely yeah 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 but cool. water signs the water signs are great they we, we need them we we can't the elements or you can't do without water my mom yeah. has a pisces moon yeah and she has oh wow great a scorpio mars yeah. so she's got a lot of 
emotion, but before it was a lot of trapped emotion. Yeah. And we had to do a lot of talking it out and addressing yeah. it. And so that was like, you know, that stuck emotion that right. like, you know, just like gets so stagnant that it's, it's starting to erode things. Right. And that's why like learning and doing therapy and things right. are so great when you have a lot of water energy in your chart. Right. Right. Because yeah. you want to heal. All I mean, it the... makes your mom quite compassionate in many ways. I mean, to have that moon in Pisces. Yeah. She's like doing nursing and you're right. She, yeah. Uh, makes she sense. loves little animals and she's very Aww. intuitive and and she's into ghosts and orbs and yeah <laughs> <laughs> all the mysterious stuff right <laughs> she's yeah. literally got a little angel halo over her head right now is like totally yeah. pisces yeah. energy <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> exactly and i painted and the, and the, the moon, picture and, and the moon behind the her behind us. and the moon behind her on the moon yeah. yeah and the moon behind her so yeah and you know. creativity is another big water energy thing yeah exactly too, right? oh and fire energy though yeah fi fire is creative fire is creative uh -huh. yeah yeah fire does have that creativeness it's it's more of a, a, a of a spark of a of a you know uh, it, it's more like new energy Fire has that new kind of energy, mm. that new spark energy. Uh, so it, it's creative in that sense. Yes. I like that uh, because then it's like when I do art, it's because I'm trying to translate my emotion into exactly. some kind of exactly sometime, some kind of external thing and so it's like the emotion that's already there and so i'm just have to get it out that's right exactly what well, whereas with fire signs they 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 they're, they're, there's something about brightness there's something about the, the the creativity is kind of like a spark of life the creativity is like yeah wanting um, to create some we, we, life yeah wanted to yeah, you, you know it's very colorful uh, that's why fire signs like they like bright things they like colorful things it it sparks it's 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 yeah and i think it's the the masculine versus feminine way of doing things too because my way of making art is like i have to get this internal thing out and then i think what yeah. you're saying about fire is like i just want to do something pretty over there right right and i just right, want to look yeah. at it and i want it to be cool <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. and i want to birth some new thing external thing external thing exactly exactly yo no definitely um okay <laughs> mom any last questions um <laughs> yeah, we're, we gotta wrap this up yeah yeah i don't have any last questions because i also am the battery is dying on my phone. Oh, well, then that's perfect. <laughs> um, Israel, man, that was so uh, enlightening. And no, I had so you. much thank fun chatting yeah, about yeah, all that stuff great. with you. Um, how great. can we How can we find you uh, out in the world? Um, I'm reachable. I'm quite easily. So I'm on uh, pretty much most, if not all, the social media platforms. Uh, I'm on Instagram. Instagram's my main one um but you can find me there at sacred planets um so if you just put in sacred planets you'll see my name is really josie come up at the bottom so i'm sacred planets on instagram um you can also find me at sacred planets um on um uh twitter uh, uh, sorry uh on um tiktok um yeah. i'm also uh um astro soul on twitter um you can find me on Facebook, Israel Ajozi, also Sacred Planets. Uh, and you can also like link me on my website, which is www.sacredplanets.co.uk. So I'm um, also, you can find me there as well. So And definitely do, everybody, you know? because yeah. I am one of his clients and I... Oh, thank you. <laughs> I can say firsthand that it's definitely worth checking out yeah <laughs> wait Thank israel you. i do have a question so like when yeah. people see you out in the streets do they say israel am i gonna have a good day today <laughs> <laughs> yeah the ones that know what i do 
I do often get like, oh, it's like, is it going to be like a good week or am I going to have a good month? <laughs> or or oh, they'll often say like, what are the stars saying up there? What's happening? You know, so yeah. that, that is quite something that does occur quite often. Yeah, it's it's something that yeah, comes people up. are always like, Amber, what is going on? Right yeah, yeah, now? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening up there? Yeah. Like, you know, you know, talk to the big guy. You know, like. <laughs> uh, so funny. Uh, Alrighty, well, um, thank you, Israel, and we'll thank you for see having you me. It's been time. really, it's been a great blast. I'd love to come back again and come Yay. chill out with mom. Mom's so cool. Oh, <laughs> thank you. All right. Bye, Israel. Yes. Bye. Have a great thank holiday you. season, too. Yes. Oh, Halloween. <laughs> like, Halloween. Hol- yeah. Holiday. yeah. <laughs> oh, and your <laughs> birthday. Happy Halloween. birthday. Oh, and yes. happy birthday. Yeah, yeah. Three days. Happy time, birthday. Right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. Wait. Oh. My mom hung up. Well, I guess I'll end the podcast by myself. Um, that's uh, been our podcast today about elements, everybody. We love elements here on the Mind Probe with Mom podcast. We hope you have had a wonderful time. If you've stuck around to the end of this episode, you are the special one. You are the the prized person listening to the podcast and if you are listening to this part you should comment something very crazy so that everybody knows that you're part of the cool club so maybe you could put i'm part of the cool club okay okay this is this is gonna be so cool so cool all right see you later bye